Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, welcoming you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo Franchise Mode Let's Play, where we are headed right back down to Elite Zoo South. Something that is still taking some getting used to, I'm not gonna lie, I'm so used to saying Elite Zoo North, but no, we are headed to Elite Zoo South right off the bat over here, because there is too machu to do today. Uh, there's too much to accomplish, there's some ideas I've got. They've evolved since I briefly mentioned them at the end of the previous session. Uh, many of your comments have had a direct influence on like the next steps and stuff like that. So I'm really excited to get right on into it. We'll have a time lapse pretty much close to the beginning. It might be, you know, a handful of minutes of just some housekeeping work and then we're going to dive on into a time lapse and get ourselves a new animal. And what I want to touch on is really briefly here, uh, many of you were suggesting that maybe it's a good idea to stay put for now and just finalize this enclosure and this space as a whole before we move on. I totally understand that. I totally understand the sentiment and, uh, and, uh, and the reason for that um, desired approach. In fact, if I had it my way, um, and only my way, then I would probably do that as well. Finish this area off and then move on. But the reality is the challenge of franchise mode. This is why I like franchise mode. It forces me to do things, uh, you know, it forces me to make decisions based on business. And, and, and a good business decision right now would be to get at least one new animal because that will, as again, many of you pointed out in the comments as well, that'll improve our overall star rating. It'll improve our overall appeal. It'll improve how much we can charge for, you know, tickets for, for like entry fees and things like that. And it'll just improve our financial situation overall. And once we have more money, we can really start pushing to those uh, heights that we've maybe grown, or some of us, I suppose, have grown familiar with, with Elite Zoo North, where we have super complex structures, uh, or rather super complex enclosures and, 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 and large ideas. Not large in the sense of, you know, square kilometers, even though this happened um but yeah so i think that's the right call so we are going to add at least one of these south american animals today and uh, i mean if the title or thumbnail didn't give it away then uh, i'll i'll keep it a secret until the time lapse is done i suppose i've got some cool ideas though not the exact same idea i had at the end of the previous session but uh similar expanded a fair bit i'm super excited for it now before we get into that though i would like to do the time lapse while the sun is up I think we're good with letting time move forward a little bit. There is, again, a little bit of housekeeping to do first. We'll do that really quickly. Shouldn't be too long. Then we're going to dive on into our time lapse and then cap things off with getting our new animal and you know, doing the management that that requires as well. So, there is interest, yes, in seeing us get involved with the tipping the scales um, challenge over here. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I, I shouldn't have to go down to... Um, elite or up to elite zoo north i suppose because in our storage we should have plenty of gharial if i'm not mistaken yes we have a lot of gharial they're almost all going to be above three stars if i'm not mistaken we can release them to the wild over here um man we have uh, we have a lot of keepers here like ones that we wanted to hold on to right and gharial are yes um uh from india we, we can do a quick double check if we want to make 100 percent sure but they are and they will contribute to the community score overall uh, so yeah, they are very much in India and outside of India, but also in India. So they should count towards this uh, challenge. So let's go ahead and do that again. We have to. I just want to make sure we have to release them to the wild, right? Uh, da, da, da. Colorful. Wow, this week we need you to work together to release three star animals from the Indian subcontinent to the wild. That's what it says to me. And I mean, I would really like to get up to some of these higher gold tier animals and whatnot. We do have a lot of them. We do have a lot of uh, Gharil, especially. Now, if I really wanted to, I could go back and pick up Peafowl as well, but I, I think I'm actually... Uh, I think I recently had already released Peafowl into the wild, so I don't think that'll be an option for us. Alright, so let's go ahead and release you to the wild. Just as a test over here. And it should, yeah. Go ahead and release you, and it should count our contribution, right? Hmm. That's weird. That's weird that I didn't count that. Well, I mean, it's very possible that she wasn't a three-star animal, but I have my doubts about that. I have my doubts about that. Um, what we could do is... I don't want to, like, temporarily put them in here just to have to remove them. That seems kind of silly. That's a bit of a waste of an animal, then. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she was three-star. I'd be shocked if she wasn't. You can't see their star ratings over here. You can only see their, um, their uh, rank or whatever you want to call it. 
Um, I guess what I could do is we could go back to Elite Two North and then do it from there. Just want to make sure we capitalize on this opportunity, right? Because it's a golden opportunity to unlock more animals. And, and just to remind you, our two rewards that we have so far are both appropriate for Elite Zoo South. So I almost feel like we'd be fools to not take advantage of the opportunity. So let's uh, let's just give it a moment. We'll hop on back to Elite Zoo North to really quickly handle that. Uh, and then we'll come back in. It shouldn't take us very long at all, folks. It's actually really funny to me how often we've had to come back to Elite Zoo North um, just at the start of this uh, new season. Here I was thinking we'd only be coming back once every, you know, 10 episodes or 20 episodes or something like that. But three episodes in, we've already come back in two out of three times. Hope y'all don't mind. Didn't sound like any of y'all minded in the uh, comments of the previous episode. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope that's indicative of, uh, <laughs> of how people feel. But yeah, I just wanted to come back here so that I could... Well, I guess we do have more animals here than I remembered, right? We could take a look at some of these guys if they're three stars as well, and we can release them to the wild as well. I don't think many of them are. I don't think many of them are, and that's why they're kind of still over here and not in the uh, Trade Center. You know what? I mean, I guess it's very possible that the animal we released was not a three star. What actually affects that then? How can you be... I'm I'm very confused. I'm very confused. I don't. I'm okay without this notification. Thank you. Now that's that's how you. This is how you don't design a user interface. <laughs> star rating. Can I can I get a thing about star ratings, please? I doubt it. No, I guess not. I mean, it's 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 really weird to me because how can I have something that has a uh, high appeal? No, I'm not gonna... Oh, there we go. Animal star rating is right there. Each animal has an animal star rating that is rated out of five stars. This rating increases over time based on how well you look after your animal. Ah, higher welfare will mean their star rating rises faster, etc, etc. Okay, so hang on a second then. Um, how are these animals not well taken care of? They were very well taken care of. Is it because I've got the game paused and then it doesn't register? Like, look at that. They're at 100% across the board. All right, let's hit play. Give it a second. No. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can bring some of these Gariel back in here and and see how they feel. So I guess you can't get a star rating for an animal that is in the um, in the trade center. Fair. Fair. We might not actually be able to contribute decently to this um, or as easily to this as I'd initially anticipated. It's actually really funny to me. It's actually really funny to me. Because here I thought we were, you know, a shoe in considering the quality of animals that we have. Um, and not just the quality, but the quantity as well, right? In quantity, you're likely to find quality, as I suppose a way to put it. Uh, lots of keeps. Maybe maybe all these keeps don't have to be keeps. I feel like I have four keeps. That's a few too many, maybe. Yeah, we've got four. So let's go ahead and get rid of... Well, okay, Snake has already on her way. Uh, I believe... Vinay and Karan. Sure, let's go ahead and get them going, I think. Both around the same age. Or all four of them are around the same age, even. So let's go ahead and get you. And let's go ahead and just do a quick test run over here. Because if it's pointless, it's pointless, and I'll move on. But it would be a shame to not at least try. Alright, so we got that going. I know we have a bunch of elephants that we can probably do the same for as well, but uh, I don't think any of the elephants are ones that I can remove, so to speak. And our peafowl over here, I mean, any of you... Nah, these guys, again, like, I've taken good care of them, but they just don't want to register it, I suppose. Zero stars, are you kidding me? Come on. Come on. I've done so well to take care of them. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to click on at all. Alright, well, you, you're, you've you're got one star, great. Good, good for you. Yeah, it's kind of wild. Well, you know what? I mean, it is what it is. And unless I can figure something out within the next handful of moments... I'm not going to let myself get too bogged down by this. Because we will just be kind of meandering and wasting time. That is not a gharial, that is a plant. <laughs> uh, I mean, again, I, it's just the parents, I guess, that are uh, three stars. Doesn't make any sense. Now, if it makes sense to you, you let me know. I'm very curious how these extremely happy animals with extremely good genes and extremely high appeal are so lowly rated. Alright, fair enough. So, Gariel, not an option. I mean, elephants, I could check into. 
but I feel almost like doing one or two elephants or a couple rhinos is not going to make that much of a difference in contribution. I was really excited when I realized that, right, the Gharial and stuff, we have so many of them. Uh, and the Peafowl as well, we have a handful. But... Seems I was a little prematurely excited. Ellie, sure we can release you to the wild. Getting very old as well. Max stars. See, that's what I'm talking about. I'm release you to the wild. Oh, it hurts to do. <laughs> I've always had trouble with this stage. See, the genes don't matter. I guess it's just about happiness. Or, yeah, I, I don't I don't understand. Go ahead and release you. Now, did that count? Because if that didn't count, I would be very upset. Yes, that counted. Alright, cool. Cool. This is based on my standing uh, against the community, so there's a uh, wiggle room there. Sneha is a little low. Rowan's too young anyway. Hungry. Uh, gotta get some food in here. Head on over here. Again, not gonna spend too much time over here. Obdix are alpha, and he's been a good one as well. Zhanvi, I suppose. The thing is, uh, a lot of these uh, female elephants are related to our alpha male. So we do want to get rid of some of them, release them to the wild, why not? Because there'll be a lot of inbreeding otherwise. Uh, and this is actually something we talked about last, well not last session, last season, I suppose, uh, with regards to our animals and how I should reorganize them. So, you know, it's, it's a good uh, push in the right direction, I suppose, getting me to do this, uh, forcing my hand a little bit. And when we do come back for a round of Elitsu North proper, there we go. The click wasn't registering. Uh, I'll, I'll be able to get some new female elephants and stuff like that, and we'll be able to, uh, again, repopulate this space, I suppose. Oh, man, it really... Uh, <laughs> I feel almost heartless, you know? Like, just clicking release to the wild. I mean, her name literally means happiness, if I'm not mistaken. So this hurts even more. For the greater good, right? It's for the greater good. Release to the wild. Okay, there we go. And that's got to be a decent contribution. We got to four. Oh man, wouldn't mind a new T-shirt, but no, no. I think I've I think I've hurt my heart enough. I don't think I could do this anymore. Not to the elephants. Maybe maybe to some other animal. Let me just check what the status of this enclosure is now. We've got Danvi. Uh, again, I suppose some of these animals could be released as well because they're not doing anything over here. Right? They're not uh, getting everything that they might get out there in the wild. Syra, what about you and Advik? Okay. They're suitable mates, so I will keep them. They're all suitable mates there, so that's good. Let's go ahead and check. Buddy here is low rated. We've got a lot of babies as well. I think they'll be fine. I don't think we'll need a new uh, a, a new parent anytime soon. So we'll be fine there. Alright, let's go ahead and check up on our rhinos. Oh, it is really weird actually talking about all these animals and being back at Litsu North. Weird in a good way. It's... uh. <laughs> I can almost sense myself not wanting to leave again, but no, we have to, obviously. All right, elephants done, peafowl done, gharial done, no luck, no luck, no luck. We have our Bengal tigers as well, but most of them, again, we have traded out. Uh, I don't think we have any extras left over here. Again, just a little sneak peek for all the people who have not seen Season 1. Just an idea of what we are capable of around these parts and what we'll be striving for if, you know, YouTube hasn't compressed this video horribly. Yeah, all of our animals here were like, I really want to keep them because we had a breeding circle going on, right? All right, you know what? I think, um, I think we've done what we can. I think that's reasonable. I think that's reasonable. We've, we've, we've given up on, not given up on, sorry. We've given away, we've released to the wild four animals. It's the right thing to do for conservation efforts, so we shouldn't feel bad about ourselves. We've checked all of our boxes as far as the animals, the relevant animals, so I think we're good to move back to Elite Zoo South. Yes, let's get back to work. Like I said, there is a lot to get done today. No time for dallying. I did want to contribute to the community challenge, though, because rarely do they ever just fall into your lap like that, so definitely glad we took a moment to do that, and I hope, again, that y'all didn't mind. Uh, it's time to, hey, yeah, leave the Americas, I suppose, and it's time to say goodbye once more to Elite Zoo North. All right, that was just a short detour. I hope y'all didn't mind. I think I think it was totally worth it, and, and I hope y'all will agree. But if you don't, let me know, right? Your feedback in the comments is so important to me because it helps me make these kinds of decisions. Like, should I never do that again? Uh, I know there's a bit of management left to do in Elite Zoo North. I know I left things 
Oh, it straight up tells me how far up I've gone. Ooh. Ooh, it's like if I just do a little bit more, I get get a couple more animals. Okay, how long left? Two days left. Oh, man. Hmm. This is something to think about. Y'all let me know, and maybe... Maybe I'll find... There, we don't have any more animals that have those three-star ratings. What am I... Well, there's nothing to think about here, right? There's nothing to think about here. There's no point going back. Y'all let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll check in, you know, uh, outside of a recording and, and try to make a little bit more out of that community challenge. But I think it was important that we did that. We'll at least get one animal out of it. Hopefully, it's suitable for Elite Zoo South. Uh, I think also it... Um, it was an important thing I had to do for Litsu North anyway. Now, there's a little bit of, again, housekeeping to do still. Uh, so let's go ahead and get some of that done over here, first of all. I do want to try and rename the exhibit. It's been mentioned that they might not actually save. Like, when you reload the level, like the, the zoo, it might actually remove the name, which is unfortunate if that happens. But if it does not happen, then we're going to name exhibit number one. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation over here, so I apologize. Maragawan Mansion. And that is a, uh, that is, um, uh, so Maragawan is the name for the Eastern Brown Snake among the Aora and Darug people. I apologize again if I'm butchering pronunciations. Uh, feel free to correct me in the, in, in the comments. It's very important to me. I try to get it right, but I know I'm not obviously a native speaker in all the tongues across the world. Uh, but yeah, so these, uh, these are a group or these are two separate groups of indigenous people from the Sydney Basin. I did a little bit of reading and they are, uh, they bordered each other, and uh, and yeah, this is their name for, for the animal. It was suggested in the comments. I thought it was really nice to kick things off really with those indigenous touches and that uh, homage, if you will, to the space that we're in. Uh, of course, we're on the island of Tasmania. We're a little away from <laughs> the uh, the the where, where these people would call home, uh, but, you know, Australia as a whole, obviously. And later on, Greater Oceania as well. You can certainly expect to see references to, uh, you know, like... Uh, Maori culture and stuff again when we get the opportunity to do it in the right way obviously those of you that are familiar with season one will know exactly what I'm getting at I'm very careful with that kind of stuff I try to be at least um, and I'm excited to implement a lot of it across the board Africa South America hopefully again there is an Oceania DLC en route uh, I really hope there has to be one right uh, koala bears kangaroos there's so much there's so much biodiversity and unique biodiversity as well I'm shocked actually, that it wasn't one of the uh, first DLCs that we got. Anyway, so that's that taken care of. Um, go ahead and let's rename Looney Balloons as well. We shall call it Crocaloons. There we go. And we are going to add, yes, an ice cream stall. Should I add one right now? You know what? Uh, let, let, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's go ahead and add an ice cream shop. I'm wondering if I want to do it here or up here. Let's do it over here. Sure. Let's go ahead and get an ice cream stall over here. Um, oh, you know, I was warned about this, and I should have checked sooner. Capture you. Uh, we have a baby, and babies can escape, right? Babies can escape spots that uh, adults can't. And it seems like this is the likely escape route that was taken over here. This was I, I, this was mentioned in the comments as well. Hey, make sure you check the escape routes that the baby might have. And I was like, yes, absolutely. Great, great call. Come on, party. <laughs> That's the first thing you should check. Nothing else matters if you have a croc on the loose eating people i was looking for a softer way to say that like how do you how do you say how do you say eating people without saying eating people and you don't you just say eating people and then you say it several times to normalize it all right let's go ahead and save that croc from its misadventures right there we go we block this off a little bit of uh croc blocking action if you will Make sure they can't escape anymore. And this will do the trick. And we'll, again, we'll beautify it a lot more down the line. When we have a lot more money, the space is going to look so different, so vibrant and alive. I'm really excited. I've been excited for this for so long. Taking that break from uh, from Planet Zoo for, uh, well, like it was about a week, I guess. It was totally the right call because it, it did, it rejuvenated my mind and completely um, has me now seeing the pieces, and I don't just mean the building pieces, but all the parts of the game in a different way um, in terms of how I can use it to my advantage. I'm super pumped. I'm really excited for the plans I've got. And and I think a lot of them would not have been possible. I think a lot of them would not have come to me had I not taken that break. So 
I want to thank you all again for your patience with regards to that. Uh, and I want to say, you know, a warm welcome to all the new folks who are joining us with Season 2. Uh, great to see some new faces in the comments. And also to those of you that uh, were with us for Season 1 and then departed partway for some reason or another and came back, welcome back. And of course, for those of you that have been with us since, you know, day one back in November of last year, which feels like a century ago, uh, welcome back as well, right? Man, it is wild, those having single-digit episodes. Single-digit episodes. Feels like a thing of the past, honestly. I think we're pretty much there. Just gotta get a couple of these. I didn't wanna I didn't wanna time lapse this because I, I wanna do the time lapse on a on a concentrated topic, so please I hope you're okay with this. It won't be too much longer. I'm not I'm trying not to be too finicky right now. But of course you can She she looks like she's judging me. Like I'm not trying to be too finicky and she looks like she's saying, uh-huh. Yeah, I'm sure, buddy. <laughs> Listen, I'm trying, okay? I'm trying. I'm being as unfinicky as I as I can. There we go. That should keep the baby out. And we'll check, of course. Once we rescue it, we'll check. Go ahead and lower you a bit. Oh, it's gonna look so good. It's gonna look so good when it's done. Alright, unpause. Slow things down again. I hate that they have to actually get picked up. Can I actually move you? No, I can't. Aziz, our baby. Yeah, I should have checked that sooner. I'm pretty sure they can't escape around these parts. These are way too steep. But we'll we'll deal with that in a moment while that's happening. Right, I want to get an ice cream stall down, right? I want to do the ice cream first because... Um, uh, it's going to... I'm oh, sorry. Facilities. Uh, it's going to help with um, people heating up. And it should be an easy way to make money for us. Should be an easy way for us to make money. So I'm hoping people get into it. Is that where I want you to be? Is that pretty much flush? It is pretty much flush, yeah. <laughs> Giant set of stairs right there. So go ahead and put you down. Exit the group. Go ahead and Shift you over just ever so slightly. No. Just you, please. Uh, right, I have to split from the group. There we go. Okay, now it looks like we're about as close as we can get. Alright, cool. Good enough for me. We've got our vendor that just joined in from there. Let's go ahead and hire another one, I think would be the right call. I want to make sure that we are staying on top of all that, right? Get you as well, and let's get you... Open the center, and let's go ahead and make sure that our work zones are guests unhappy. Education. Guest happiness is going to be a little bit harder with uh, since we're playing it on hard mode. Go. Let's go ahead and edit the work zone as well. Go ahead and add you. And do we have these need to be part of it as well? I guess. There we go. Cool. All right. Now I did actually have a name for the ice cream stall as well, which was the impetus for all this rock pops. <laughs> I've got a couple of names for an ice cream stall, and that's the one that I've decided to go with. It's really difficult, guys, to pick and choose. There's so many good ones. Um, right, the other thing that was pointed out to me... We're almost ready for our time loss, folks. The other thing that was pointed out to me is that I can see negative impact by hovering... No, see, I... You used to be able to see a circle, like the full-on radius... ...of where this negative impact area extended out to. Um, I'm guessing what has happened is, in hard mode, they don't show it. 15 meters. I don't, I don't. I don't know. I can't visualize 15 meters like this. We'll find. We'll find a way around it. We'll be fine. Unless I'm missing something. We'll be fine there. I think that's actually all the housekeeping. I think it's time to pop on into our time lapse. The sun is up. It's almost directly above our head, actually. So that's ideal. Oh yeah. Look at this. This is good. We're coming here right away. Ticket price is good. Might need to actually tweak that then. Ticket price is good. That's quite a few people saying ticket price is good. All right. Let's go ahead and fix that then. I mean, sorry. <laughs> that sounds like horribly, uh, I don't know, predatory. Go with seven bucks and six bucks. Now, it's been mentioned that they don't actually have to be different prices, but I have noticed that it seems like kids complain much more easily at lower price, at uh, higher prices than adults. I think. I'm not 100% sure. It's just me guessing. You know what? Actually, there's one last piece of housework left to do. Housekeeping. Housework. <laughs> um, speakers. These guys. I was absolutely thinking about them last session, but then I forgot to put them in for some reason. Which is hilarious to me. 
Oh, but make sure you're... It, this is, I mean, part of the reason why I reduced the radius on the other speakers was because I needed to put these speakers down, and then I completely forgot. Classic. There we go. Figure a little bit more like this. Excellent. Reach about the roach, and there we go. Cool. Now they should start netting in a little bit more money as well. Wonderful. And financially, we're actually doing okay. We're at 11k already, even though I just bought a new uh, facility over here. That's going to make us some good money. Look at this. Oh my. People want to drink. People are thirsty. I might actually want to get another spot to drink in up over here. Look at you down over here. All right? Yeah, that's what we did on that side. That's what we'll do on this side. Where is our baby, actually? One of our adults. Many guests think tickets are overpriced. All right, I'll change that back then. I'll change that back then. I'm going to move these guys onto land as well so I can do my time lapse properly. Oh, don't you get into the water as well now. Hold on. Let's just pause it. Literally ideal conditions for uh, our time lapse. I should just pause it. That is not the baby. Where's the baby? I, I like trying to find... Oh, there we go. Wow. Literally flew right over his head. Um... I like to try and find the animals myself first before I just rely on the auto finding mechanism. Wow, okay, lots of escape points. Seriously? Huh. How are you able to get up over here? Glad I checked. So this is all blocked off, alright. Oh, I see. Wow, how can you... How can you get up over here? Up over here? Oh, that's gotta be it. That's got to be it. And then down over here, we're fine. But here, you're able to escape. That's probably because the barrier is inside. That's probably what's going on there. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and sort this out really quickly. I want to I sort it out now before we do the time lapse because then it's like I can put it out of my mind, right? I can just kind of pack it away and say, all right, no crocs escaping. No crocs escaping. Pull you up and again, we'll perfect this later on. Try not to be too finicky right now. I say as I... <laughs> ...become excessively particular about the placement of this one rock that nobody will ever see again. Come on now. Work with me, game. There we go. That's that, and then over here, I just need to check the barrier. Man, this frame rate being so smooth is wild. <laughs> I got so used to the excessively laggy... Yeah, this will just be a matter of moving it, right? Well, I just want to check to make sure it works. We're in the clear, and then we'll uh, we'll get back to the time lapse that I was talking about. Unpause. Don't go in there. Okay. Fine. Fine, do what you want. Do what you want. No escapes. Still have some escapes, right? Fair enough. What are we looking at here? Pretty sure we're fine here. I guess this needs to be adjusted a little bit. Okay, no big deal there. How do you get up there? No access over here. I guess you're able to get up from over here? Gotta be it, that's the only thing I can see. That's like a uh, potential escape route. Now, these rocks people will see, so this will, these will need some tender love and care when the time comes. That time is not now. Time is soon. On the topic of time, I'd like to get to the time lapse. Where are you? There you are, buddy. Make it a beeline. I see what you're up to. Won't you try it? Won't you try it? They can still get out. Ah, oh, I see. Oh, no. Ha ha. Ha. Nice try. The tiniest of gaps. <laughs> wow, that's hilarious. Uh, that That's pretty cute. <laughs> nope. Nope. Hey. Hey. Get back in here. You can't get out there. I put that, I put that block down right on time. All right, cool. That's good. Perfect. Perfection. Excellence. This is just because of the barrier. Almost certainly. Yeah. It's because of the barrier. And how it allows the animal to get out. 
That was a weird issue in the first session. I have to say where like the uh, guests were fleeing, but whatever. Problem solved, that's all that matters I guess in the end, right? Yeah, all right, we're all good here. Okay, cool. So with all that out of the way, Sun is still actually, you know, Sun is still perfectly fine because this is where we're going to be working. So this is excellent. I think it's time lapse time, folks. We've uh, done all the management stuff we needed to do. Many guests think the tickets are overpriced. All right, let's go ahead and drop that ticket price. I don't know. I always feel like clicking here will bring up the ticket price um, box. It doesn't. Pull this price back down to six and you down to five. Let's go five and four. Six and four. I forget what it was before. We'll find out. We'll see what the guests are saying. Uh, so that's that taken care of. We've got vet research complete as well. Presumably on the um, snakes, right? Yep. We get them some more layout stuff. I don't think I need to. I can't believe I'm in the saltwater crocodile habitat. All right, good. Well, at least they're seeing it that way. It's a little baby saltwater crocodile. Indeed it is. Um, indeed it is. Animal is thirsty. He not being well taken care of. What's going on over here? Hot environment, hot space, everything's hot, 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 so I can understand being thirsty, obviously. And say hello to you. What do we have over here? Need a workshop. I don't need a workshop. Not yet. We'll need a we'll need a workshop when we actually start putting down our We're gonna need a workshop pretty soon, actually. <laughs> uh hmm. Maybe I should I'll save it for later. Alright, folks. Yeah, I think uh I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and move these guys over so we have full freedom over the, like, terraforming and whatnot. Move you out of the water, please. Get one of our... Again, our head cannon has to be that a keeper is coming through to do it. It's also been pointed out that uh, because Kadek and Elok are not related, it means we have a lot more saltwater crocodile options from Elitsu North that we can bring in for breeding purposes, which is absolutely excellent. That is really quite ideal. So, looking forward to that. And there we go. They're both up over here. Unboxed. Yes, wonderful. Let's go ahead and pause things again. And now, ladies and gentlemen, finally, after a long wait, thank you for your patience. It is time to dive on into our time lapse. Uh, a fair bit of terraforming to do. Hopefully we can actually get the animal in today as well. That would make me very happy. Uh, yeah. With that said, it's time lapse time. All right, folks, this is a massive undertaking and... As is tradition, I suppose, it ends up taking a lot longer than anticipated. Um, I hope y'all enjoy this one because I absolutely... Uh, oh my god. Hands down, I, I think I'd go so far as to say this is my uh, favorite time lapse so far. I, I think so. I mean, I'm having to think back on to 103 episodes or 102 episodes of Planet Zoo, I suppose. Uh, and, and this one definitely feels like... Uh, and I'm, I'm really pleased with the end results, so I, I hope you all enjoy it as well. As always, feedback, opinions, thoughts are welcome, so make sure you keep it all coming. Um, but the first order of business over here is to build the viewing space for the uh, saltwater crocodiles from the other, you know, angle, as it were. Um, so I went ahead and dug the hole there. It took a little bit of effort to get the shapes all perfect, but using the... Uh, the um, the cube shape and whatnot, I was able to make a pretty nice, clean you know, hole over here. I need to use those tools more often. I didn't use them nearly enough for Litsu North. Uh, then I actually also went around the inside and painted some rock textures and things like that to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, I'm going to try and be a lot better at using those textures as well to create very nice variations. I'm pretty pleased with how things go over the course of this time lapse, but I need to stay on top of that. I need to stay, you know, uh, sort of rigorous with myself with regards to that. Um, but yeah, so with that, uh, you know, kind of window out of the way, I'm able to start developing the other side. Because this is all I really wanted over here. And I was just checking over here to see, like, the height, the viewing height. Because, again, I want to make sure that guests are able to see, yes, the bottom of the croc, sure. But also, you know, catch a glimpse of the top half as well. So I decided to raise things a little bit. Uh, it will need a little bit of adjusting and stuff. We, we do it all this time lapse. And we fiddle a lot with the path over here. So, uh... I think it's a time lapse. I'm glad I didn't try to execute it yesterday. Just to get it to the point that I was satisfied took me, I think this alone took me 15 minutes to do. Just going back and forth, messing around with the sizes, messing around with the negative space. And yeah, I could just plug the gaps with rocks. And honestly, there will be some rock usage after all anyway. Uh, but I like the, uh, the the slanted approach, the sloped approach and things like that. So I wanted to try and get it as close to you know, perfect as possible. 
Um, I guess it's just a, yeah, it's a bit of a me problem, I guess. Uh, but I, I think it was totally worth it. I think it has resulted in a, uh, uh, in a nice kind of entrance to this new zone, as it were. Man, I'm so excited to, like, just share everything about this one. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with, uh, with the, um, the end results and everything. It, it, it's really quite fun. Um, next order of business. Oh, no, no, we're still not there yet. Yeah, you can see I was, like, struggling. I was like, I just want it to be, just want it to lay flat. This is one thing I wish was smoother in the game. I, it's just me, I guess. I just don't understand how the path system, like, what it's looking for at times. Uh, but anyway, that's besides the point. Here you can see I'm very quickly actually looking at llamas uh, to check to make sure that they are walk-in enclosures. I was very certain of that, but then some of y'all mentioned in the comments that no, 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 they're not. Uh, that made me kind of second guess myself a little bit. Uh, I welcome that, by the way. I'm not, I'm not criticizing the the commentary or anything. That's 100%. Super cool. I'm glad you made me double check because it would be horrible if I hadn't double checked and it turns out I was wrong. And then we have a walkthrough enclosure for an animal that is not supposed to be a walkthrough enclosure. That'd be terrible. Um, anyway, so they, they, you can do a walkthrough with them, and so that's what we're going to do. Uh, inspired by the. Um, the visual experience, let's call it, of Machu Picchu. Uh, obviously, this is not a mountain or a high peak, as uh, as Machu Picchu, you know, not only implies with its name, but also is. Uh, but we're going to try and recreate that that feeling. We're also, yeah, we're making it a walkthrough enclosure, but you'll notice that I did not put down a guest entrance gate. More on that in a little bit. Um, but I will, yeah, more, more on that in a little bit. Uh, Maybe even after the uh, the time lapse or when we actually get to the, the bit over there. Right now, what I'm working on is, again, um, well, a couple things. What I'm working on right now is making that kind of step pattern um, that you'll see from, like, if you look at images of Machu Picchu, the, the hillside kind of has, like, this carved step pattern, uh, almost like it was used, well, like, you know, for farming and stuff, a similar, similar aesthetic. So I really wanted to get that going, but at the same time, I had to stay cognizant of the fact that we can't make the enclosure too big because if the, if we make the enclosure too big, you know, guests can't see the animals properly. There's way too much walking to do. There's all kinds of issues. Uh, and then at the same time, I didn't want to make it too small where it felt cramped and improper. Uh, again, we can fit like, if I recall correctly, it's like 30 llamas can fit into an enclosure. Like they're they're comfortable with very large groups. So we can go a little oversized. We can really make this space quite crowded. And that way it'll be a nice walkthrough experience. Uh, much like the flamingos were in Elite Zoo North, except here the llamas are confident animals, so they're not going to stress out as easily. So it's going to be good, I think. Uh, I also, you'll notice, actually tweak the pathing. I wanted to make all of the overhanging spaces out of uh, wood, and then the rest out of stone. Again, just trying to mimic something, but I think ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to actually cover the path up with some construction material as well, eventually when we have uh, extra money lying around. That's probably what we're going to do. Uh, by the way, keep an eye on the money we have at the beginning of this time lapse. I'm just saying, and not implying anything. I'm just saying. Um, now this was a bit of a struggle point as well. It just wasn't getting the height perfect. And it's like if I have flattened to terrain selected, I would I would think the terrain would get sucked up as well. Yeah, you know, like just like flatten it to the ter fl flatten the terrain to the anyway. It's fine. We figure it out in the end. It all works out just fine. But uh, it was a little bit of an endeavor to get this, but I think it was a worthwhile endeavor because uh, it ends up looking not like this. Don't worry, we undo all this because this doesn't doesn't look good. <laughs> we undo all that. I go the other way around. And again, trying to build these like curvy paths and things like that and just trying to find interesting shapes. I wanted to feel like this was built around a natural um, uh, terrain formation, right? So rather than doing like 90 degree curves and making life easy, I'm going for, yeah, an interesting shape. And again, hopefully it'll see uh, the use I wanted to see. Now again, going in, getting in those textures and whatnot, getting the rock in on the side. What I'll probably do is afterwards uh, come in with the taiga rocks, like the construction pieces, and put those in. Because again, in my head now, Machu Picchu, it's all vibrant greens and gray and white stones. Um, those were kind of like the reference images I was looking at as well while I was actually doing the time lapse. So I'm going to try and recreate that. Now I believe those steep like drops are actually um, constructs. They're not natural. I'll need to double check my reference for that, but I'm pretty sure that I'll have to make like little brick uh, walls, basically. Well, not brick, stone walls with like 
brick pattern um, stonework, basically. Anyway, going in and, and cleaning some stuff up, don't let the grass poking through the uh, the pathing, obviously. And you'll see I, I made this space a lot bigger, and I'm testing, I'm not going to expand it any further right now, but I was just testing with it because that's where all of the other animals are going to be from the South America zone. Uh, this walkthrough is basically, yeah, a, a path to get from... It's a transitional path, basically. You go from the crocodiles and the, you know, Australia slash Africa sections over to South America. Uh, we're going to try and keep it relatively condensed. You can see I'm planning over here. I'm like, what could I do? What could I do? And I'll I touch more on that later, so I'm not going to mention it now. But, uh, oh, okay, you know what? Actually, I guess I experiment more with it than I thought I did. <laughs> I wanted to have ease. It's so wild recording a time lapse um, and not remembering parts of it. Uh, I wanted to see if I could get the walkthrough happening among the uh, llamas as well. Uh, I wanted to see maybe we put some stores down at the foot of this like quote unquote mountain or whatever you want to call it. I wasn't liking it. I wasn't liking the feel. I wasn't liking the shape of it. I might revisit it. I might think about it again. But uh, yeah, I wasn't happy with how it was looking at the time. So decided not to commit to anything just quite yet. Next step over here is me doing, um, well, a couple of different things. Uh, so for one, I want to get water. That little central entrance point there for me is, is a great central hub. Not only visually, because it's going to have waterfalls and things like that, but also functionally, because it's going to have easy access to water purification. And bodies of water, no matter how, like, no matter how much volume there is, uh, if they are even slightly in contact with a filtration system, then the whole body of water will be cleaned. Uh, or purification system, I forget what the game calls it. Uh, so that's why I've dug this little mountain over here, the, the mountain side over here. Not only because it's going to be really cool looking to have this giant waterfall there, again, matching a lot of uh, reference images and a lot of references y'all gave me in the comments as well. Uh, not only is it a, a uh, you know, a reflection on that and the environment we're trying to recreate, uh, but it's also a, uh, a handy way to make sure that the water is clean and a quote unquote natural source. So, works out with multiple layers. Very happy with that. Now, we also have, obviously have to get the um, staff path connection over here. This was a bit of a hassle as well, just getting the right height, trying to carve it through again, try to keep it hidden over here, basically tunneling through an overpass of dirt and soil and rock, I suppose. Uh, and again, the pathing here just want to kind of snap. So, a little bit of a uh, wiggling back and forth, but overall, it works out quite nicely, I think. And... Uh, we managed to kind of hide and, and blend the uh, the approach angle as well. I'm pretty happy with how it ends up looking. It's, it's like I wanted to do this, honestly. What what, what we got right now, where it just kind of connects, I like that. But unfortunately, the game requires a habitat entrance, uh, which you know I'd momentarily forgotten in my bliss and happiness. Uh, but we do fix that. Don't worry. I really wish it didn't require. A, uh, a habitat entrance because I mean, come on you can get in here <laughs> you can definitely enter this space our guests are going to be doing it uh, but yeah here you can see I make a little bit of uh, an adjustment to my approach over here uh, at first I was really worried that it wasn't going to look very good but we do end up managing something pretty nice and, and kind of camouflaging it and hiding it as well there we go so nothing too crazy a little s curve over there a little chicane and now it's time to put the barrier down and again, this is going to be a walkthrough, so... Oh, I might need to make... No, I don't think so. I was going to say, I might need to make some adjustments. Now, I'd love it if the llamas, you know, are able to walk across everything, including the paths. Imagine walking down one of these little bridges and uh, a llama just comes up with you. Like, come on, right? Photo op, right? Um, God, <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really pleased with this uh, environment that we built. So yeah, just kind of hiding our staff path entrance. Uh, again, I'll do a better job of it down the line... Uh, we'll clean it up a lot more down the line when we have a lot more money. We will be revisiting and completing this stuff. Like, again, again my plan is next session, uh, or I guess, sorry, I guess this is the first time I'm mentioning it because, right, I'll mention this in the future as well. But um, my plan for next session is to reaccumulate some wealth and, uh, and then finish these sections off. I want to finish the croc, uh, like, the croc rock. I want to finish this enclosure, which, by the way, I need your name suggestions for, so leave a name suggestion in the comments down below. Um, and then I want to move on. So 
one of the big problems I had with Elitsu North, in my opinion, and I think many of you expressed this in the comments as well, is uh, leaving things incomplete and then coming back and having to complete a bunch of things leading to a uh, slowdown in pace. So I'm trying to balance that out. Uh, anyway, over here we have a, a staircase, I suppose. Uh, one of one of few staircases we'll have in Elite Zoo South. Uh, but this is more as a part of the uh, enclosure itself. Uh, this was a mistake. I'll touch on that later as well. But yeah, so if you again, if you look at uh, you know Machu Picchu, there are staircases, there are steps. So I wanted to kind of recreate that. It's not for use by our guests. It's for use by our alpacas. Our guests stay on the path. Please and thank you. Uh, but I thought this was a nice touch. Uh, yeah, and, and yeah, I put down a store, but it was a little premature, too expensive for how much money we have right now. We'll do that later because we really are kind of broke-ish. We have, we'll make the money back. I'm not worried about it, but it was a little premature to buy a $2,000 store right now. Um, so I, I decided against that. Here, just second guessing my decision, obviously, about the materials used and whatnot, but uh, overall still happy with how things look. And I'm going to fancy up the uh, education boards over here as well. I uh, framed them in this really nice little piece over here, and then the speaker gets attached to that as well. I believe I, yes, fix this up over here as well. And I cannot remember. No, I think I leave that for last. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with, uh, with, with the overall space. I'm happy with the overall structure. I don't want to talk about how the uh, guests interact with it or how the animals interact with it, because I feel like uh, that's spoilers, right? I want you to... Uh, enjoy or loathe the moments just as I did. Uh, but overall pretty, yeah, happy with how the spaces come together. I'm gonna put down a couple more TVs and speakers and things like that. Bins and things like that as well, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, gotta get some power generation as well, of course. So again, we managed to tuck that and hide that away. Uh, the negative impact zone will hopefully not be big enough to actually affect our guests or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good, really happy with this space. Uh, I've got, yeah, there we go, here, here it is. I've got visions, I've got, I've got plans. So this trick you're seeing right now was suggested to me, and I mentioned this again later, but I, I want to mention it now as well. The, uh, well, do I not do it now? Do I put beddings and stuff down first? The, uh, the little trick you'll see at the entrance is something that was suggested to me in the comments of the previous episode. It was, uh, done by another YouTuber, and I will link to that video in the pinned comment down below, so check that out as well. But for now, off the time lapse. All right, folks, we are back. That was an extremely long time lapse, but I have zero llama intentions about it. I'm really excited for uh, for the space we're building. Again, it's not complete. I know, I know, but we don't have the money for completion just quite yet. When it is completed, it's going to look absolutely fantastic. I think I, I'm I'm really pumped for this one. I hope it gets used as I like have envisioned it. Uh, I think it will. Just to give you a little bit of an overview, in case I didn't mention some of these things during the time lapse, I'm not sure what I would have talked about or what I will be in future talking about in past. So just to highlight some important things, uh, for cost reasons, I did not yet put down the toilet block that I intend to put down over here so people will have a reason to go all the way to the end over there. I have not yet put down any of the food stalls, and in fact, I unfortunately had to fire this poor guy as well. I hate that you have to do that. I wish, like, you could... I wish you could, like, put stuff down, and then the vendors only get hired after the store opens the first time, or something like that. I don't know, but it hurts to, to have to fire people. I don't like doing it, but here we go. Um, but yeah, I wanted to put down some eateries and stuff, but it required a fair bit of uh, terraforming still. And we don't have access to power here yet. There were a lot of issues with it. And then, of course, on top of that, again, it's all cost prohibitive right now. So I'm really hoping that we continue to generate money out of here. Uh, having two animals improves our, you know, ticket, like, uh, allows us to charge more with the tickets. And I hope that we, of course, are able to make some money down over here as well with the llamas. I have to buy some donation bins and things like that as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, get one right off the entrance over here. And, oh, whoops. We, of course, have to get our color coordination right now. Llamas. Llamas are like kind of whites and grays, right? Like that's kind of the, the tones we're looking for over here. Yeah, that's kind of the tones we're looking for. What's up with the green here? No, not, not the green, not the green. There we go. I feel like that's, you know, llama-esque. Llamesque? I don't know. You know what I'm getting at, getting at though. Uh, so yeah, donation bin up over here for when you all see them on the you know, rubbing pillar. Cool, that's all great. Fantastic, we're having a wonderful time. Go ahead and put another one maybe down over here somewhere. Just trying to anticipate where the guests might actually 
stop to look and uh, and place the donation bins around those parts and then of course we have to put down education boards and things like that as well um go ahead and put one down over here you can never have too many donation bins it feels like you can never have too many donation bins uh and what we might do is might we might give it like some time to get some more money why can i not uneven placement what are you talking about it's the road the path it's not uneven oh is this part sloped barely oh come on game <laughs> work with me here work with me here all right right at the edge then right over there cool that's about even uh and up over here as well i've already got one right so yeah hopefully guess we'll be using all these donation bins and it's not overkill hopefully the space isn't overkill my intention is yeah to have some like food spots and stuff up over there part of me is wondering if we don't get a path that goes deeper inside like if we don't like go all the way in to like here and uh, and have some like food spots and stuff up over here and that way people will be able to kind of be in the thick of things with the um with the llamas and for that maybe we use uh the uh this natural path kind of a thing i don't know something to think about uh but i, I like how this feels right now again going for those like ridges and stuff once it's all done once i've got all the rock pieces in place it'll look a lot more like it's supposed to i think uh, and then over here we're going to expand and make a little kind of village almost because again I, I i don't know if uh if if machu picchu evokes the same imagery for everybody uh but for me those ruins are a very iconic part of that whole experience so the idea is like this is kind of the hills uh, the mountains if you will then we're going to have the little village area where we're going to build a shared enclosure as many of you have pointed out quite a few of these animals do share their enclosures nicely like the anteater i believe uh yeah the anteater the tapir and the uh capuchin monkey as well they can all share space so that's fantastic gonna have a nice big enclosure sorry i don't want to say big and scare people gonna have a nice uh, decent sized enclosure with interesting stuff going on. I think that I don't think people will be able to walk through, unfortunately, because the Baird's Tapir is not a walk through animal. The Capuchin and the Giant Anteater are, though, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, guests can enter in confidence. So maybe we just do the Anteater and the Capuchin together? Uh, where are we? Yeah, maybe we do that. Anteater and Capuchin together, and the Baird's Tapir on its own separately, because those of you that mentioned it, you're absolutely right. We have only so many animals in the South America, you know, area. It might be nice to, to, to touch on this, I suppose. And then, of course, I can't believe I forgot to mention the Jaguar. Such an iconic animal from the, uh, uh, from the area with so many interesting, like, interpretations and understandings and implications of the Jaguar. Uh, so also really excited to come up with an idea for the Jaguar, but my idea, yeah, uh, well, I don't want to give it, give too much away, but I'm, I'm liking where this is headed so far. We've got our, you know, reference to the hillsides, mountainsides of Machu Picchu, uh, have the little ruins and stuff over here. It'll also be walkthrough. Uh, yeah, and we'll end up going, maybe we'll loop back up over here as well. Try and keep it kind of condensed, right? And then over here, of course, we'll have waterfalls and stuff when, when the money is right. When the money is right. So let's unpause real quick, I think. And no, 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 we're not there yet. Sorry, before I forget and before it all becomes a horrible mess that I have to clean up, literally, go ahead and put some of these bins down, right? Because I will uh, be very upset to see food and litter taking over our, um, our park. I'll put you up over there. I'm going to need so many of them, aren't I? Now, are there bins... Are there bins with the... Yeah, this isn't... I don't know, man. I mean, I guess that works. I guess that's not too bad. I guess that's not too bad. Um, Classic East Asia, India, New World. Really? There's only the one South America? We couldn't even get two South America bins? Come on. Come on. Could've got two. Alright. They look kind of nice. So that's good, at least. Put one there, put one there. Let's put one up over here. Go ahead and put some up over here as well. I mean, we're gonna need, we're gonna need bins, right? We're gonna need bins. I think that's good enough. Let's go ahead and put one down over here. Hopefully, we don't need one over this ramp. We'll put one at the end of it though, and we'll need benches as well. But benches, I will do uh, maybe afterwards. Maybe after we let time go forward a little bit, and we can get some more uh, money in the bank. 
Again, so eagerly just pushing forward with all this. Um, I want to make sure it doesn't bite me in the butt, right? As much as I'm trying to uh, control myself, it's hard sometimes. <laughs> it's difficult. It's difficult. Put that up there. Put that up there. And I think this is... Actually, let's put you up over here. And I think that's distance enough. All right, cool. Cool. Bin's done. So yeah, we can open things up now. Let the money accumulate a little bit and get the animals uh, dropped in. And we can then put down more education boards and, uh, and and things like that as well. So let's go ahead and unpause. And, uh, and yeah, I'll take a look at the money hopefully rise. It should go up. I mean, I'd be shocked if it for some reason suddenly stops going up. Everything else has stayed exactly the same. What we will need to change is we'll need to make a new work zone, I guess. For now, I'll put it into the central work zone alongside everything over here. Uh, and then I think next session, we'll go ahead and add another work zone and more uh, staff as well. I think that's the plan. The low on cash warning, we don't really have to worry about. What matters is that we are uh, trending upwards as far as our finances are concerned. Where, what are you running about? Why are you running? Why are you running? Hang on. Going home. Nice zoo. Okay. I was like, did you like pick a pocket or something? What's going on over here? Any complaints? Zoo tickets are overpriced. All right, fine. Everyone's still complaining about that. I guess I could drop it. Five. We want more people coming for less money. That'll be fine. Education is doing a lot better than it was doing previously. How much do these things cost to put down again? Because uh, I can definitely put more down. Education boards cost 30 bucks. You know, let's go ahead and put some more down. This will be a nice uh, hall of education, as I think uh, one of y'all called it. <laughs> and we can call this uh, deforestation. Let's go ahead and get another one over here. Try and line it up. There we go. I don't know if uh, if we actually get donations for this kind of education. What else? What else? Repair of the ozone layer, I think, makes sense. I think one of y'all mentioned it in the comments as well that that would be an ideal uh, thing to pick. And we can get a donation bin right in the gaps over here and here. Okay. Right, just a little bit of money to make. In fact, I can get the animals right now, really. The, the education boards don't take that much uh, money. And over here, I'm also hoping to check out a nice view of the animals. Like, if you're standing here, and one of them comes up to the edge over here, it'd be pretty good, I think. I think. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see how it feels and looks and things like that. Inspector has arrived. Fair enough. I assume you're only going to go to Croc Rock because that's all you know exists. And lock over here. That's Kadek. A lock. How are you feeling? Enrichment's getting kind of low already. That's fine. Not the end of the world. Not too bad. Hungry. You're hungry. Why don't you... Why don't we feed you then? Keep her over here. Want to make sure that uh, we got a decent rating. Yeah, money's looking fine. Guests are coming through. Let's hope they're happy about the ticket pricing right now. I imagine they will be. The ticket price is fair, yeah. Education should be going even higher now. As long as people actually stop at this stuff. But yeah, I don't know if these things collect donations. I've never seen them collect donations, but I saw it mentioned in the comments, so I was like, okay, maybe, maybe I've missed something. So, you know, why not try it? Okay, who, who, who did this? This is literally, like, come on. Who did this? Why? <laughs> why do you do this to me? Why you gotta hurt me? Alright. Are these guys trying to bring in more donations? Hopefully, because now we have the educational speakers as well, right? I also really like how the light looks um, down over here. Like that little sliver of light. Uh, also, actually, on the topic of light, my plan is to do a lighting pass when we, you know, complete sections. It'll all be a complete package kind of approach every time we uh, we venture forth into an area. You know, I think I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, the animals in over here. Otherwise, it, all this work... It was investment for nothing. Uh, it's not going to cost me any money. We have plenty of conservation credits, and this is exactly why. Um, Elok is being looked at, you know, probably right now-ish. Hopefully, food will arrive soon. Keep her on route, it says. Where, where are you, buddy? All the way over there, eh? Hmm. I hope this isn't too far away. This this can't be too far away. They were just taking their time. They're low rank. He's just a trainee. I mean, I could put a Keeper Hut right over here, right? 
that is an option. I could have a small keeper hut right over there because this space isn't going to be used by anything else. It'll just be like decorative elements and things like that, so it'll be fine. Now, if you're hungry, hopefully that food arriving will draw you up there. Come on now. You know you're interested. You know you're interested. No? <laughs> no. So how hungry are you actually? Oh yeah, money's looking good. It is September. We have made a decent chunk of change. Our purchases, obviously, were significantly higher this year. About 7k. Which means we... Yeah, we're, we, we made more money this year than we did last year. That's good. That's good. People are stopping over here and getting their education on. That's excellent. Inspector has left and we have been rated four stars. Okay. Rock, rock, four stars. That's a little upsetting. Just a matter of timing, I suppose. Uh, we'll, once we get into the rhythm and we have higher trained staff and stuff like that, that's not going to be as much of a problem. So, okay. Okay. Guys are not getting any education. 30% is not terrible. What an amazing day, they say, with a neutral face. <laughs> what? Yay! Okay, I like that. See? That's, that's good. Best day ever. Alright, alright. There should be more scenery around here. Yeah, I could definitely bring some more scenery in if that's what people are complaining about. Uh, but I think I'm complaining about not having these animals in. Let's take a look. What's this alert? Literally, alright, low on cash. That's fine. We're going to address that right now. Animal market. We're looking for llamas. There we go. Filter, and of course, of course, these are the circumstances. Man, <laughs> this is where having a, um, an active online marketplace is like, bad, when it's not active. These are all animals from the Frontier Zoo. I mean, I guess we'll just get a male, uh, like a mediocre male llama. One thing I want to check really quickly is, um, God, remember when this game did not have the search feature? Ridiculous. Yeah, we can have up to 30. Right, so lots of room would be nice. Like, their requirement is 550, which is why I don't mind things being a bit bigger. I don't think we'll have 30 in this space. Uh, but, you know, maybe maybe 10. Maybe more. We'll see how many we can fit. If anything, we can expand this a little bit as well, right? All right, let's go ahead and pick up that one male llama. Ooh. Okay, we've got some female options as well now. Good, good, good. Um, size, gene, and longevity tend to be the most uh, indicative of what your results are going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and get Chispy over here. Chispy? Chispy? I'm not sure. If anyone knows how that might be said, let me know. I'm always actually uh, very excited to learn uh, the linguistic traits, I suppose, of a new language. Go ahead over into quarantine first. First order of business. We got ourselves a female llama. Now we need a male llama. Anytime I say the word llama, it reminds me of... I don't know how many of y'all will recognize this, but... Uh, not gonna buy anything. Then don't. Then leave. Um, close this before it distracts me again. Right, uh, if y'all remember the Animaniacs cartoon from, you know, way back when... I always remember the Animaniacs because in one of their episodes or something, or maybe it was an ongoing gag, I forget, but they had the uh, the Dalai Lama be a llama, and to meditate, he would say, Lama, 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 Lama. And that's all I can think of when I think of llamas. <laughs> can't help myself. Oh, I can't help myself. All I see. Alright, perfect timing. Eastern Brown Snake is done being researched right on time. We can get to work on the, uh, the llamas here then. Uh, one's in quarantine. Yes, I believe that's what's happening over here from Trade Center to quarantine. Excellent. I like this space. It's nice and densely packed. It doesn't need to be overly complicated, I think. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get ourselves mail. Uh, Andes is not bad. Also, a very on point name. Ooh, size 75. That longevity's poor, though. Let's go ahead and get Andes. It's just there's too many layers to that. Too many layers to that. A llama named Andes. Come on. <laughs> How could I not? Alright, so we've got ourselves a male and a female llama. Excellent. Waiting for that to get done. And we'll drop them off in here. Make sure that they're not able to escape and things like that. Um, yeah. 
this little trick that I did over here, using the elephant grass to block the uh, escape route. It was suggested to me in the comments of the previous episode. Again, when I say I read all the comments, I'm not kidding. So it was suggested to me there, uh, and it was shown off by another YouTuber. I'm going to test it first, and if it works, I'll shout them out. If it doesn't, I don't want to send any negativity their way either. <laughs> so I want to make sure it works first. Uh, because if it does, that's awesome, and it's, uh, it's a genius solution. Um, it's, it's a genius... Um, I don't want to call it a hack, but uh, um, loophole, I guess. Very, very creative, very clever. I love that kind of stuff. Um, where are we? There we go. I was like, come on, any second now. We've waited about enough time. So you are done your quarantine, so let's go ahead and move you over to here. Again, this will allow us to test the escape as well. We should be fine. We should be fine, I think. I mean, there's so much other stuff that could go wrong, obviously. Like, I don't know. I mean, the babies will be able to creep out from underneath here, but we'll seal this before we have any babies, obviously. And I don't know if they're likely to go for a swim this deep. But uh, we'll find out about that. And again, this, uh, this whole river and waterfall system, not only does it look neat, in my humble opinion, at the very least, it also allows us to filter the water over here thanks to the... Um, the single water filtration system being able to clean up the water over there. So, uh, two birds, one stone. Two birds, one stone. Where's my llama? Oh, here we go, here we go. Another one's quarantine has passed as well. Let's go ahead and bring you in as well. Beautiful. Such majestic beasts. Such majestic beasts. They're so cute. Llama ear wiggles are <laughs> really up there as among... Some of the best. Alright, let's let's check real quick before we have an escape. Uh, no. Okay, so that's maybe not working because it's not high enough. Let's check here. I think it needs to poke through just slightly, doesn't it? Yep, yeah, beautiful. So this was a suggestion. This was a, a, a method that I believe it was uh, Rudy that... Uh, that that came up with it. So you know, I'll actually I'll link it in the uh, I'll link the video in the uh, pinned comment down below. And uh, I just said a reminder for myself. I want to make sure I don't forget to do that. So uh, you can check him out. He he also does some really cool stuff. And this is just I mean, come on, credit where it's due, right? This is amazing. This is amazing. Now we can do custom entrances because I was continuously uh, bothered by the um, limitations of the guests entrance like the walkthrough entrance the question is now if guests will use it and it looks like they're about to i sorry buddy i would like to look at you for a little bit longer but first but first i want my tv here please <laughs> not the editable sign the tv there we go go ahead and move you out quickly assign you llama wasn't a llama me to select the tv now it doesn't work that's that's weak. That's weak. Hey, no, the overlap is bad, obviously. Well, let's actually expand that and then decrease this one. There's plenty of room to get this education, right? Go ahead and get one of these over here. Over here. Over there, if one decides to go that far. Cool, people have come through over here. This is great. How are you? I mean, come on. Look, you're... Look at the animal. Look at the animal. Yes. Thank you. How could you not? This is great. They're actually using the stairs and everything. I'm so happy. I'm so pleased. <laughs> I'm so pleased. This is one of the most um, fun builds I've done in recent times, I would say. Uh, personally. Uh, again, my personal opinion. I enjoyed this one thoroughly. And uh, I hope you all did as well. The results have been fun. Now, again, it's not done yet, right? Just as, again, for those of you that are not familiar, or those of you that maybe have forgotten or... And for those of you that are familiar, the uh, approach... Ah, uh, no, this didn't work. Oh, I've left the slightest sliver of a gap. Um, the approach I like to take is take everything to a certain percentage of completion, test, and then nudge and push and poke and prod uh, slowly but surely, rather than, like, rush and get 100% of a thing done uh, all at once. I do like to take uh, an iterative approach 
because then you make sure like the skeleton of the uh, of everything is working like if this staircase didn't actually work and they were for some reason not able to navigate that and go up and down then we'd have a much bigger problem right uh and so i want to make sure I, I sort that stuff out before those problems uh become uh irreversible let's put it that way irreversible important alert requires attention how have you escaped hmm one of these might be too shallow perhaps we'll check we'll check we'll check when they get dropped back off um but sorry what did i want to do we fix that you should be getting returned oh this is my foolishness. They're going to go all the way around. Rather than go... Actually, it's not my fool. Oh, it is my foolishness. Because they can't actually go in through here. Oh, come on now. They should be able to go in through there. They're right... Whatever. Fine. It's fine. That must be a nightmare to program, I imagine. Let's go ahead and fix this up a little bit. It's bothering me. I imagine it's bothering you too, as it very well should. Okay, so hang on. How did our baby croc escape over here? Where are you? A jeege. Nope. Still out there? Oh yeah, still out there. Anyone gonna pick him up? Or uh, I'm just gonna leave him out there? Taking a moment over here. Down over here. Let's check again real quick. Oh, you're making a break for it. You are indeed. Hmm. Maybe up just a little bit higher. Check now. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. Why are they able to get out? Hmm. Looked like it would work for all intents and purposes. There we go. That's good. Okay. Now let's see if guests are still able to come through, though. Ah, yeah, looks like they are. Okay, good. That's because that's a major issue, right? If guests can't come in, then it doesn't matter if the animals can't escape. No donations yet, I imagine. I'm sure we had a lot of refunds as well, and emergency captures are expensive too, so this year has very quickly become a bit of a rough year, but we'll make that money back in no time, I'm sure. And right now, I suspect crowds will form up over here, but once we add the animals down over here, guests will start filtering through, and we'll actually see the space filled out. Again, just trying to do a bit more future planning this uh, time around with this season, compared to what I did last time around. And uh, already, like, the, the zoo is taking shape, I think, quite nicely. Um, we, go, we have some undulations. We, we're going up, we're going down. We're seeing a lot of variety. We're going to see a lot more greenery and stuff being added as well. Again, money. As the money gets better, uh, we're going to be able to explore more. And I think what we'll probably have to do is that next session, we'll probably have to, like, play for a little bit at double speed or something. Collect our uh, monies. Oh, looks like we have some babies on the way, so that's good. Not over here, though, unfortunately. Uh, but, yeah, collect some money. And then we'll be able to execute some really uh, nice finishing touches across the board. Guests are happier. Thirst is a bit of a problem. Okay. Education is still not ideal. Okay. Hopefully this education board isn't like poorly placed or anything. Because that is a possibility. And what I could do. Looks like people are using the bin. So I'm glad that's over there. Uh, I could put you over here. It might be nice to actually have it. Get a decent height. There we go. And the thing is, actually, we also don't have enough... Uh, like, we don't know enough about llamas, so to speak. Like, we need to do some research. Because the more research you've got completed, the better the education rating is. Um, you'll notice, in fact, I believe, when we look at the saltwater crocodiles that we have researched, we've got all this information down over here. Whereas for the llamas, we got nothing. Okay, is that not perfect? I am very pleased with this enclosure. I'm very pleased with this enclosure. I don't know if this will get that much action, and maybe not until we have a lot of baby crocs, but... Uh, this is great. We got them over there as well. We've got their food and everything. Well, you know what we don't have? We don't have all their, like, nuanced niceties more than enough space but again we want to have like a nice big pack uh some more short grass would go a long way that's good to know they don't like the elephant grass but okay it's it's only a marginal issue and we can add some more enrichment for them as well some food enrichment and things like that so go ahead and get um, a bit of short grass 
want to eliminate too much of the long grass either, but we got a little bit more short grass here and there. There you go. But it kept my uh, panel open. But I could see. Yeah, we need a lot more. I also need to block off the escape route over there, which I think this guy's making a break for right now. <laughs> like, I, I remember it. I was like, yeah, they're not making a break for it. We'll be fine. And then, you know, speak the devil, obviously. Go ahead and get some more of this down first. Just want to stay a little focused over here. There we go. Let's move all this out. Let's go ahead and get all you taken care of as well. It's nice to have the green because, again, the uh, actual reference itself is very, very green. Oh, this is actually a lot greener than I thought it was going to get. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I was worried about this. This was the one thing I was worried about about doing the uh, the grasslands biome. This is actually really nice. Oh, amazing. Oh, amazing. Okay, wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and... Lock the section off, shall we? Now, where are we? Put you up over here. Then you right around. There we go. And again, these animals don't submerge themselves or anything, so we're able to, you know, believe that the water is still able to come through, but the animals have been blocked off natural barriers and all that. There we go. Oh, don't tell me you can just clip through. Oh, it's so cute how they swim. Okay, looks like I did not push this far enough. Pull you up a little bit. There we go. There, that should be good. Yeah, gave up. Gave up. Good stuff. Now over here, I think this is just because we didn't extend our uh, barrier far enough along. Not the donation bin. There we go. Put the barrier. Yeah, we can just adjust that, no problem. Cool. Done. 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 Sunset. Beautiful sunset. Oh, are you gonna take a drink? You're gonna take a dip. You're gonna take a drink. No, you're just gonna stare me down. Because you know I'm watching. <laughs> Fair enough. You do you, buddy. You do you. These guys are great. These guys are great. Go up the stairs. Look at that. Legit. And we're gonna probably like add more vegetation stuff as well to show grass poking through and kind of you know reclamation going on and things like that. This is great. Look at the crowds coming through as well. Like they're already flowing down here pretty decently. I'm very happy with that. Alright, we definitely need to capitalize on all this though. And I definitely need to remember, or I forget, even though it's a temporary solution. To add you guys in. Even if it's a temporary solution. And we, we're going to do a South America work zone, obviously, but for now. Cool, alright. Feeling pretty good about this? Yeah, see, we, we need some cleaning done ASAP. Feeling really good about this, actually. Buddy over here. There's no escape. Don't, don't try it. There's no escape. Hold on. Or at least I think there's no escape. Yeah, no, we're good. It'll be great as well to see them actually get onto the uh the paths and whatnot if they eventually decide to do that and walk around that'd be really nice i think and once these spaces get crowded it's gonna be great the sun sets off in the distance get over here you beautiful beast <laughs> such majestic creatures oh they're so cute they're so cute. Look at that, sh like, ear shape and everything. Look at that. Look at that. That's majestic. Alright, folks. This, oh yeah, look at that. An absolute boss. And that backlighting. Perfect. Couldn't ask for a better uh, thumbnail opportunity, I suppose. But, uh, folks, this is where we're going to call it a session, I think. This is going pretty well, I would say. We're, 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 we've made some good progress. Again, money... Took a bit of a hit because we did a huge construction thing. There were a couple of escapes that we had to obviously A4. Um, but if I quickly take a look at our saltwater croc one last time to make sure that he's not able to, he's still escaped. Dude. I'm gonna need you to stop vet catching in progress. 
going to hurt our funds a little bit. <laughs> it's okay. Not the end of the world. We, we, I need to remember the first thing I need to do is check his escape routes because it's probably somewhere like over here. He's able to climb up a slope or something like that. I know I said I was going to check it, but then I didn't. Yeah, next session we're going to start by making a little bit of money, making sure our animals can't escape anymore. That might be a good idea. And then we're going to uh, try, hopefully with the money we make over the beginning of the session, at least complete part of this enclosure, if not uh, this enclosure, whichever will be actually affordable at the time. Anyway, folks, the session's gone on for long enough. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. Really pleased with where this is uh, headed. I hope you all think so as well. But as always, you know, your opinions, your thoughts, your suggestions are welcome in the comments. So do keep them coming, folks. If you had a good time, leave a like as well. It really helps me understand what people do and do not want to see on the channel. And on that note, I must say farewell, so a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. It keeps us alive and running smoothly. You allow me to keep doing this? Oh, wow, that was terrible. But also a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.